action that you just asked. Uh, yeah, that, that's true because, you, you know, Toussaint is a very controversial figure. He is. He very is. controversial. Parce que vous connaissez yeah. des salines qui, qui trahit Toussaint. Oui, And we des salines qui trahit Toussaint. Well, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, well, I could, I, I am pretty much uh, on the on the history, so I I, I think I know why. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think I know why, but nevertheless, though, I mean, also to say was a visionary, you know. We got to give all these guys their credit, you know. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, gentlemen, it is. Uh, do you see this two o'clock right now? I'm not sure if right. you want to start admitting folks as they come to. Yes. What is the plan? So we have a couple of our guests starting. Let me know when we think we should start uh, um, bringing people in. Yes, please do. Okay. It's just about time. Excuse you. Okay. All right. So I'm. I'm having, so I'm having little issues uh, going to Facebook right now. What I'm going to do is uh, we are recording. So I'm going to go off camera and on mute and I'm going to start letting people in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Dites, whenever you are ready, maybe it is 201 now. I don't know if it's 202. Or at two or five, you want to get started, or if you want to just uh, say a couple of things as people get in, tell them we're going to start at two or five shop. Make an announcement as you wish, sir. I'll uh, uh, please take it away uh, when you see fit. Thanks. Okay, am I on? You are. Okay. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on where you are, and and thank you for attending uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, we are celebrating uh, the 219th anniversary of the Battle of Verchere. As you know, uh, as most of you may know, uh, that was the last battle because before the French were expelled from the island. And subsequently after that, Haiti declared itself an independent nation. Uh, today uh, we have, uh, well, before we get into the topic, um, we are letting people in. Um, we usually have some ground rules. Uh, we encourage you to write your questions uh, in the chat and then we will get to the question after the presentation. Everybody will get it. Every, uh, every question that is in the chat will be read. Uh, so we are asking uh, for some patience. We also uh, will try not to have dialogue where the discussion is monopolized between one or two uh, persons so that everybody uh, get a chance to have their question uh, answered. Uh, we thank you uh, for being civil and uh, for being polite and also for being considerate, uh, giving people a chance uh, to ask uh, questions uh, in return. Okay. How are we doing, Mike? Are we okay? Are you still letting people in? Yeah, correct. Uh, we, okay. we do have uh, quite a few uh, participants on um, at mm -hmm. this point. Uh, please uh, get started. Okay. Uh, we have the pleasure of having with us today uh, Dr. Paul C. Mokomb, uh, who is by training a sociologist, uh, historian, uh, author, who has published multiple books. Uh, two, of his, two of the articles that he's written uh, that are so, somewhat my favorite uh, had to do with, uh, pertain to the children of uh, Sans Souci uh, um, Toussaint Dessalines and Pétion. Another one is uh, the Toussaint, uh, the children of uh, uh, Dessalines uh, and Pétion. Um, I'm not going to go into what these two articles, uh, what they pertain to, or what they deal with. But if you, anybody who wants it, can email me, and I would be more than happy to send them a copy of the article. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Mokon would uh, would also be very happy to send you a copy if you were to request one, okay. Uh, Dr. Mokom is a Haitian philosopher and sociologist, a former visiting professor of philosophy and sociology at Bethune-Cookman University, assistant professor of philosophy and sociology 
does West Virginia State University and the president slash CEO of the Moncombian Foundation Incorporated. He is interested in the application of his theories of phenomenological structuralism and consciousness field theory to contemporary issues such as the constitution of consciousness, race, class, and capitalism, in parentheses, globalization. Dr. Mokumb uh, resides and uh, currently lives in Lauderhill, Florida with his wife. Unfortunately, I don't have with me a list of his publication and, and some of the information in the bio due to a printing issue uh, is not clear to me. So I'm gonna ask Dr. Mokumb to fill in uh, at some point today to tell us about his multiple publications. Uh, at least the one that uh, he think uh, we will be very interested uh, in reading. He's a phenomenal speaker. I'm really glad and honored to have him. And Dr. Mogon, whenever you're ready, man, take it away. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Claude, for having me. Um, it's a pleasure uh, to see every chance I get. Uh, you know, I'm honored to speak on Haiti and the Haitian Revolution. Um, as Jean-Claude pointed out, my area of research is actually I was trained as a phenomenologist and a structural Marxist. And my areas of research is on consciousness, the origins of consciousness. And it's from there uh, I venture into understanding, applying my theory of consciousness field theory to understanding the constitution of uh, Haitian consciousness, Black consciousness, and, and European consciousness in general. Uh, the theory basically deals with, uh, is is highly theoretical. It deals with quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and I know John Claude is a neuroscience, neuropsychologist, so it, it deals with neuropsychology. Uh, um, I do not believe that consciousness emerges uh, uh, from uh, the neural correlates of consciousness, from the neural correlates of the brain. I'm one of those, I'm, a, I'm most call a post-materialist. I believe that consciousness uh, uh, stems from what I call the absolute vacuum, but I won't get into that. Um, so majority of my research and understanding um, Haitian historiography and understanding the constitution of the Haitian state is trying to apply my consciousness field theory to ascertain the origins of consciousness. Now that's important because as trained in the Western tradition, in phenomenology, in uh, 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 structural Marxism, my research does not commence with uh, 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 Western science or Western epistemology or Western ontology. In fact, all of my research commence with uh, uh, Haitian historiography, Haitian epistemology, and Haitian ontology. Now that's important because what we have to understand when Haiti was constituted as a, 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 an empire, not a nation state, because when Dissalim declares Haiti an independent nation, he declares it an empire. When Haiti is declared an empire, you have to understand Haiti is situated within a 19th century context that view people of African descent as ignorant, as animalistic, as barbaric. So in the mind of the Western person, they could not fathom how it is that a group who've been labeled animalistic, who've been labeled barbaric, could defeat the greatest empire at the time, which is the, the uh, uh, French Empire. Not only, was, not only did the, the Africans of Haiti defeat the French, but they also remember they were fighting the French, the Spanish, and the British plus the Americans who were selling guns to, to, to all three empires at the time. So they could not understand how it is that these illiterate group of people could, in the end, declare themselves independent, not be granted independence, but garner their own independence through fighting. So it, it became the justification for the success of the Haitian Revolution is attributed to yellow fever. So throughout the history written on the Haitian Revolution, it, it was yellow fever who defeated the French. And had it not been for yellow fever, they would have decimated the Africans. Now, this is important because 
what we have to understand about the Haitian Revolution is we have to situate it in a social, political, and economic framework to understand how it is that Haiti would emerge as a successful revolution, one, and how it, what are the factors that determine the decision-making uh, 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 aspect of what Dessalines did and what he wrote in the 1805 Constitution. Now, this is key because what emerges out of 1804, there's a direct parallel of what emerges out of 1804 and what is going on contemporarily in Haiti. It's the same situation that Dessalines is facing. I know many people won't understand why, because we think we're living in modern times and sometimes, some, somehow 200 years ago, is different from what we're facing in, in 2022. This is key. When the Haitian Revolution commences, and I'm gonna date the commencement of the Haitian Revolution, not with the ceremony of Wakaiman per se, but I, I would commence it with 1789 because it's very important to understand the population uh, at play here. There are four revolutions taking place in Haiti at the start of, this, of 1789. Now remember, Haiti is, is, is Saint-Domingue, and Haiti at the time, the majority of the population, two-thirds of the population in 1789 is 500,000, two-thirds of the population was African, directly from Africa. They, they weren't Creole Blacks, they were directly from Africa when the revolution commenced. And what part of Africa do they come from? They come from the Bight of Benin and the Congo. The Bight of Benin uh, uh, is the first group of Africans the French would bring into uh, uh, the the, uh, the island at the time. The second wave of Africans would come from the Congo, and many of these Africans were warriors. They were prisoners of war. This is very important to understand why it is these brothers would eventually win out and defeat. So these, these were brothers who were strategic. And they're represented by uh, uh, African leaders such as Makaya, who was a Congolese warrior, uh, Sun Susi, another Congolese warrior. These were men uh, 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 who were in the army, who were captured and sold by, uh, by the Congolese uh, leadership to the Portuguese, who sold them to the French and then brought into the colonies. Now, 28,000 of the population were what were, were called at the time mulattoes, mulattoes. And you had 31,000 of the population was Europeans, white, composed of a planter class and composed of artisans who worked uh, uh, as overseers of the plantation. And another aspect of the Haitian Revolution that is very important, remember, unlike the Americans, the French did not breed Africans. Remember, the Americans bred the African brothers and sisters as though they were horses, like animals. The French did not do that. The, the French system was brutal. And once an African died of old age or uh, some happenstance in the sugar plantation, they were killed off outright. And the French simply imported more Africans as opposed to breeding them in, 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 as horses as the British did. So, so in 1789, within that context, there are two dominant ideologies that permeate that context, the, the, the context. You have mercantilism, mercantilist capitalism, which is the dominant form of capitalism at the time. Now, this is very important to understand what is mercantilist capitalism. And it's what we would cont contemporarily call protectionist capitalism today. Mercantilist capitalism suggests that the way that nations can build wealth is by possessing colonies, having these uh, colonies produce raw materials to the metropoles who would then have industries where they would manufacture products, sell it back to the colonies, and this would increase the wealth of the colonies. So the empires at the time had to protect their colonies and they had to protect their own manufactured products. This is why we call it a form of protectionist capitalism. And it's the, the, the contemporary form of capitalism that dominated, for example, the 1940s prior to uh, 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 the, new, the New Deal and prior to Keynesian economics. So you have this 
On the one hand, this mercantilist system that is that's emerging during the colonial era, where you have European empires who are fighting for colonies so that they can accumulate wealth by controlling the 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 economic uh, 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 the economies of the colonies. So they were, it's a sort of vertical integration. They have colonies control the, the raw materials in the colonies, which are sent to the metropoles, where the metropoles have the merchant class, the manufacturing, industrial class, who produce manufacturing products to sell at home and back to the colony to accumulate wealth. So each empire would protect their spheres of influence, similar to what America does today. America protects its economy while simultaneously having spheres of influence where it can uh, 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 garner uh, uh, raw materials and finished products. America in the 19, post the 1945 New Deal era would, would actually export their industries to China and elsewhere uh, uh, where they eventually would become a post-industrial society. Now, in contradistinction to this uh, uh, mercantilist capitalist system, on the March of 9th, 1776, an English philosopher came out with a, a book titled The Wealth of Nations. Now this is 25, uh, 15 years prior to the Haitian Revolution. And what this English scholar by the name of Adam Smith comes out with this book and argues that, oh no, what the European empires are doing is absolutely wrong. Instead of controlling and protecting their economies from free trade, they should liberalize their economies, specialize their economies where uh, uh, the focus would be on producing certain commodities, specializing in certain commodities, and freely trading for other commodities that they may, that they may need or may not have. Now, remember, Adam Smith is not articulating anything new. He's observing, he's criticizing the mercantilist system and seeing how um, the planter class and the merchant class were ob 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 obviating from the mercantilist system to, to trade against the metropole. And he's theorizing about the, 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 the trade that was taking place, the, the piracy that was taking place. And because what he's arguing is that through piracy and the control of colonies, the empires were losing more money. So if they allow their colonies to freely trade amongst themselves, they would make more money, which is what the colonies were doing anyway. So what you have at the beginning of 1789, 13 years after Adam Smith produces the Wealth of Nations, are two competing systems that would form the structure of the conjuncture that would shape this Ali's decision-making in the Haitian Revolution. On the one hand, you have mercantilist capitalism, which dominated for centuries. And on the other hand, you have an emerging liberalization, liberal form of uh, capitalism dominated by Adam Smith, David Ricardo, and numerous other scholars. Now, this is no different from today. We call the, the latter, the liberal model that Adam Smith came up, we call it today neoliberalism, and which is juxtaposed today against protectionism, et cetera. So same structure of the conjuncture, or oh, uh, contemporarily, that existed in 1789 when we see the beginning of the Haitian Revolution. Now, this is key. Keep this in mind. Two systems emerging, and then there is a third system I'm going to introduce, which many scholars, even though recently many scholars are starting to introduce this concept, I'm not the first, I simply borrowed it from Jean Casimir. Jean Casimir is a Haitian sociologist in Haiti, who his, he called it the counter-plantation system. I, I, I'm against calling it the counter-plantation system, and I'm going to go into it why I'm against what Jean Casimir calls the counter-plantation system. I call what Jean Casimir called the counter plantation system, I call it the voodoo ethic in the spirit of communism. Because in 18th century Haiti, you have 
the mercantilist system, which is dominated by the metropoles, uh, 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 by the, the, the French banks, the French merchants who want to control the colonies and ascertain as much wealth from the colonies as, as possible. On the other hand, you have the emerging liberal capitalist system, which the planter class were, were, were basically operating under to, uh, to, to basically counter uh, uh, the mercantilist ideology of the merchant class back in France. So what the planter class were doing, they were simply trading against the enemies of the French. They were trading freely with the British. They were trading freely with the, the Spanish because they realized it was they, they would make more money by trading freely in the Western Hemisphere and being indebted to the merchant class, which was in France at the time. So the liberal model is being promoted by the, the planter class against the, the merchant class in, in France. There is a third model that the African, remember when I told, at the, at the start of this conversation, I said in 1789, Two-thirds of the population of the colony were directly from Africa when the Haitian Revolution commences in 1791. And they brought them their economic system. Now, this is very important because this Ali will be situated within three systems, I argue, that he has to make decisions that oppose the Battle of Vietier. He has to determine how should he constitute the Haitian Empire. The African leadership who were brought into the colonies, they were against the, the, the colonial system, the, plant, the plantation system, and they brought with them their own system, what we would call in, in Haitian Creole, the Laku system. Basically what many of the leadership, the African leadership want, wanted to establish in Haiti out of the Maroon communities, and even post-independence was a system of Laku in which each leader or each tribal leader controlled their own Laku. And this is what they wanted to establish throughout the colony. This is what they wanted to establish against the mercantilism of the planter class and the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the liberalism of the planter class and the mercantilism of the colonial power at the time, uh, the French colonial empire. So you have, the mercantilist system on the one hand, the liberal, the liberal model on the other, and you have the Laku, what Jean Casimir calls the counter-plantation system. I call it the, the, the voodoo ethic and the spirit of communism. This Laku system, all three models represented by different groups within the country, within the island. So you have now the planter class, because my not too many women came with the French, unlike the English uh, uh, 13 colonies. Many French young men arrived to Saint-Domingue trying to make money. So many of them, they, 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 they reproduced with the, the Africans and the emerging mulatto class emerged uh, within the, the colony as well. This mulatto class was juxtaposed against the free people of color, the, the, the free Blacks on the island, or what was called the Creole Blacks, which was juxtaposed against the Africans, what would be known as the Bosal. So you have four groups in Haiti representing three systems. You have the, the whites, the planter class. You have the mulatto class who share in the ideology of uh, uh, the planter class. They were very racist. This is an element of Haitian history we have to deal with, that the mulatto class were very racist. They shared their vision about the Africans were just as racist and barbaric as their, as their, their the, the, the white planter class. You have a group of Creole Black. These are Africans, one of, African parentage, but they were born on the island. And they were juxtaposed against the Africans, the Bo, who they call the Bosal, who emerged on it, who were brought into the island to work on these plantations. Four groups represented th representing three systems. So in 1791, we date the commencement of the Haitian Revolution with the ceremony of Guacaima. 
which is interesting because you get depending, and this is the, the, the problematic of Haitian historiography, because Haitian historiography has been uh, uh, propagandized, it's, it, it's ideological. The, so you have the mulatto class representing one version of Haitian history. You have the Creole class, the, the black Creole class representing another version of Haitian history. So we have to see, understand all that when we're trying to understand the Haitian Revolution. We date the commencement of the Haitian Revolution as a, ceremony, a voodoo ceremony of Wakaima, led by a man named Bukman. Bukman was a Congolese imam, a, 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 a Muslim imam, who was sold to Haiti from the island of Jamaica. He was an African. He, he was brought into the British colony. And because he was going around uh, uh, establishing maroon communities, the British sold him to a French planter uh, in, in Saint-Domingue. And we date the Haitian Revolution with his call to arms in 17, August 19, 1791, amongst the Africans. Now, this is, this is the, the, the propagandized. Now, his call to arms is amongst the Africans. And he dates his, his call to arms. He traces his lineage to Makandal who in the 1750s was also a Muslim imam who was calling for the Africans to revolt against uh, um, uh, uh, the, the colonial system. So at this ceremony of Wakaima, it is, it is suggested that Bukman and Cecile Fatima, who was a voodoo priestess, was embodied by what the voodoo sector called the goddess of the Haitian nation, which is Esme Duncan in, in the voodoo pantheon of gods. And she basically laid out the unfolding of the Haitian revolution and its leadership. Now, its leadership would commence with the African leadership supplanted by the, the, the Creole Black leaders in, the, in Dessalines, Toussaint, Capois, uh, uh, Henri Christophe, these were Creole Blacks who would assume the leadership of the revolution midway through the revolution. So what you have is the Africans, a call to arm among the Africans to abolish not only slavery, but also the colonial system and to establish Lacus in their own independent uh, uh, Lacus headed by African tribal leaders, very important. Remember, three systems, four groups. So the Africans are calling for the abolishment of not only the colonial system, but the nation state system as well. They're calling for Haiti being established as a system of Lacus around the country where each tribal leader will have their own Lacus. Now, this goes against the, the colonial mindset of the Creole Blacks, such as Dessalines, Toussaint, who they don't want to abolish the colonial system. They, they want to abolish slavery, but they don't want to abolish the colonial system. In its place, for example, Toussaint wants to introduce a corvée system. Now, this is important because people always assume that the corvée system is a, that this Ali would adopt from a, a, a white governor by the name of Santo Knox. This Ali, I'm, just, I'm sorry, Toussaint gets this idea of the corvée system from Santo Knox uh, during the Haitian Revolution. Now, that's important because it's not, even though it abolishes slavery, it, it, it doesn't abolish the colonial system. It's basically no different from the Jim Crow era in, in, in America, of which basically the African Americans had, it was a land lease program between the African Americans and the Southern whites. A similar, the the Corvée system is a similar system. And this is what many of the Creole Blacks, now this is important, why is it that Creole Blacks would want to maintain a colonial system and not adopt the African Lacoud system. Interesting. During the Haitian, when the Haitian Revolution commences, many of the Creole leadership, Toussaint, Desali, Capua, uh, uh, Moise, 
uh, um, Henri Christophe, many of them, when the fighting commences, they would take over plantations that the planter class had uh, 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 basically uh, 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 left when they escaped the, the warfare at the time. So basically, the planter class abandoned many of the uh, um, plantations when the fighting commenced, when the Africans revolted, and many of those plantations basically were usurped by the Creole uh, uh, um, Africans. I'm sorry, the, the, the Creole blacks, which is interesting. Once they ascertain these lands, instead of land reform, they simply reproduce uh, 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 the colonial system in which they grew uh, uh, um, uh, sugar, coffee, indigo to export in order to basically purchase manufacturing products. And this is the Creole Black. So remember, on that note, many of the African leadership viewed the Creole Blacks as enemies. That's very important because Sansouci viewed Dessalines as an enemy. Makaya viewed Christophe and Toussaint as enemies because in their minds, they were white men. They wanted to re reproduce the same colonial system, system that the planter class had put in place. Now, the third group, the mulatto class. Now, even though I'm drawing these strict distinctions, I'm doing it for academic purposes and for, to, to get a better understanding of the geography, the political and social uh, 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 environment, uh, the social milieu at the time. The mulatto class were a wealthy class. They inherited many of the lands from their fathers who had, uh, uh, who had abandoned some of the plantation, who had gifted them the plantation when they left for, for France. And they also, because they could not, because of the black codes that were adopted by the French to govern uh, racial and the social economic racial system of Saint Domingue, they could not become professionals. Even though they were highly educated, educated in France, they weren't allowed to practice the uh, medicine, to practice uh, uh, law. So many of them went into what's called the police force at the time. Their, their job was to protect the colony from the enslaved Africans. And because they were landowners, because they were plantation owners, they also adopted a merc the, 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 the mercantilist idea because they don't want independence from France. They simply want to be able to participate in the colonial structure as, land own, as a land-owning property class. So they don't want independence from, from France, believe it or not. So they would adopt the mercantilist idea. And they, they're not in favor of free trade as well, because they, they value the protectionist, the, the protection that they received from uh, um, uh, uh, the French Empire at the time. So they're more mercantilist, they're into the plantation system. And so now you have. The whites, it, which is strange, because if the whites were smart, the, the 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 mulatto class is an actual ally for the 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 planter class because they are a wealthy class, they're land owning, and they're not against the colonial system. They're not even against abolishing slavery. They would assume the uh, uh, the, the that position in both the uh, uh, revolution, but they're not against slavery. They look. They share the same ideas and values as, as, as the whites. So they're not against the colonial system. So we have four groups, three systems, fighting for control over Haiti. Now this is important because when, when Napoleon finished his war, his war against the British and turns to reconquer Haiti, from Toussaint. Now remember, this is important. This is why I have a problem with Toussaint that many people may not share. Toussaint had, there's an 1801 constitution that hate that Toussaint writes once, uh, 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 once 
the governorship of Haiti realized they cannot control the revolution. They have to grant freedom to the Africans because they're losing money. They make Toussaint governor general once he gets rid of Santo Knox. I know I'm trying to encapsulate a lot of history in a short amount of time, so I apologize for this. Um, one, by 1801, Toussaint is governor general of the island. He does not abolish the slave trade. He maintains the slave trade. He has, he introduced, he abolishes slavery, but he introduces the corvée system. Now, what is the corvée system that, because this Ali would also adopt the corvée system, but he would eventually abolish it and we'll see why. The corvée system says, okay, the Africans don't want to work as slaves. Okay, fine. We won't, they won't be employed as slaves. They'll be land lease. We'll let, allow them to have a plot of land. They can grow their crops, grow uh, uh, export crops to, to, to ship to France, while simultaneously they would gain a third of those crops from the, the, the slave owners. So they're not slaves. They're just land lease owners. <laughs> anyway. So they would continue to produce colonial uh, uh, export products for the colonial market while simultaneously uh, sharing some of the, the crops with their uh, 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 with their the plantation owners. This was favored by the mulatto class. This was favored by the Creole blacks, but this was not favored by the Africans. In fact. Toussaint will kill his, his, his godson, Moïse, over that very issue because Moïse sees that Toussaint, the corvée system, is no different from the colonial plantation system. So Toussaint would, 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 would assassinate his own uh, uh, godson because of his siding with the African leadership who were against the corvée system or any elements of the colonial project. So in the 1801 Constitution maintained uh, um, the the African slave trade because they needed more workers to work their plantation. And in a way, it maintains the colonial system through the corvée system. When Napoleon sends General Leclerc to recapture the island from Toussaint and make it a part of, remember, Haiti at the time is the richest colony uh, 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 in the world at the time. When he sends Leclerc to recapture the island, Remember, there was a war between the mulattoes and the, and the Creole Blacks. The mulattoes led by Jean Rigaud, uh, Andre Rigaud, excuse me, in which many of the mulattoes under the director, uh, uh, under the governor generalship of, this, uh, of Toussaint, they left the island and went to France because they were against, number one, it's racist, it, it, uh, racist. They were against being ruled by Toussaint, which is a Creole African, of course. And so many of them returned to, to France. Now, General under General Leclerc, and when Napoleon sends um, uh, uh, Leclerc to recapture the island, many of them return. Rigaud returns, uh, Pétion returns, Boyer returns to recapture the island for France. And in the midst of all that, France did agree to declare slavery, uh, 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 to abolish slavery. But as I mentioned, the corvée system supplanted the, the, the colonial plantation system. So when Pétion and Boyer in the French army returns to recapture the island for Napoleon in the French empire, what happens is, the empire is under the directorship of the Creole Blacks in the Corvée system. So they're maintaining the colonial system through the Corvée system. So they're, they're continuing the production of uh, 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 sugar, indigo, coffee, the export, and for the import of manufacturing products. They maintain the mercantilist system, even though there was some liberal free trade taking place uh, uh, outside of that. In fact, there are some scholars who argue one of the issues between Toussaint and Napoleon is that Toussaint eventually was going to liberalize trade between Haiti, America, and Britain, which would 
undermine the mercantilist system that the French Empire wanted to maintain in place. This also forces Napoleon to sell the Louisiana Purchase to Thomas Jefferson in 1803 because he needs to fund the, re uh, the recolonization of Haiti. So who returns to recolonize Haiti? We have a, a group of mulatto uh, uh, generals who return with the, with the French. And then upon arriving on the island, even though there's some skirmishes, eventually Toussaint tells his Creole generals to give up, surrender to the French, and once they do, it would reconquer the island. So they do. Dessalines, Capois, uh, Christophe, they burn their plantations initially. Initially, they start to fight. Uh, uh, but eventually, Toussaint tells them to capitulate, which they do. And the war then turns into a war between the French army under the generalship of mulattoes and Creole blacks against the Africans. This is very, very significant. And it's omitted in our history tremendously. The African leadership at the time is under the directorship of uh, uh, um, Makaya and Sun Susi, two Congolese African warriors. They remember they are they are against the corvée system and they're against the colonial system. And it, it, this is very significant because if it was not for the Africans, Haiti would not be an independent country. Because and this is and, and I was mentioning when I got on air. And this is why this Aline will eventually. Uh, 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 give give up to send to the French because what happens? Toussaint, who's the governor general, he tells the Creole blacks to capitulate to the French and then form a unity against the Africans. While simultaneously, Toussaint was telling the Africans to continue to fight in the in the mountains and in the jungles of Haiti. So when there is a meeting between uh, uh, Toussaint and Sun Souci, in which Dessalines comes upon that meeting. He sees Toussaint meeting with Sun Souci. And once he sees that, he sees the double play that, that, this, uh, that Toussaint is playing. He's actually playing the, the Africans against the mulattoes, the French, and the, and the uh, uh, Creole Blacks. So this is why he will eventually uh, 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 abandon, to, uh, set up. Toussaint, and Toussaint will eventually be captured by Leclerc and sent to uh, uh, France, where he dies in April of 1803. But the Africans, under the leadership of, of uh, uh, Sans Souci, continue to fight against the French. And they're winning, believe it or not, they're winning. And when Dessalines realized that they're, the Africans will win, and if they win, the corvée system will be out, and the mercantilist system will be out, the liberal system will be out. So what does this Ali do? This Ali meets with, calls a meeting with Petion. Remember, Petion and this Ali were bitter enemies. They fought what's called the War of Nine in the 1790s, in which this Ali decimated the mulattoes in the South. And they're bitter enemies, but this Ali meets with Petion, we call it the Congress of Makaya, May 15th through the 18th of, uh, uh, um, of 1802. This Ali meets with Petion and says, if the Africans win, they are going to kill us. Because the Africans, they hate the Creole blacks, the Africans hate the, 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 the mulatto. He says, if the Africans win, they'll have control over the island. If the French win, They'll, they'll reinstitute slavery. The mulattoes won't be able to practice, uh, practice medicine or any other uh, uh, professional. So he says, let's, let's unite, get rid of the French. Don't worry about the Africans. I'll handle that. Once we take over the island, we can decide to do what we're going to do with the island. After this is where it, it is stipulated, they came up with the blue and red flag for Haiti, et cetera, at the Congress, et cetera. So Petion agrees. 
And Dessalines sends Christophe to Sans Souci to tell the Africans to join the Creole Blacks and the Mulattoes because they're going to overthrow the French, take over the island, and, and, and uh, declare Haiti independent. Sans Souci says no. Sans Souci says, we're winning. Why should we, well, you all are just like the whites and the Mulattoes. We're just going to reinstitute either the Corvée system or the, the, the colonial system. So what happens is Christophe assassinates Sans Souci. And this is how the Africans would fall under the leadership of Dessalines, Capois, and Christophe, and then would go to fight with the, 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 the Creole Blacks and the Mulattoes, leading up to the Battle of Vertier in, in uh, uh, November 18th, eventually decimating the, 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 the French uh, uh, army. Le, Leclerc had died by that time. Rochambeau, who was just as malicious and racist as Leclerc, had taken over the French army. And um, eventually, with the assistance of the Africans, the, the, the Haiti is declared independent by uh, uh, Dessalines, January 1st, 1804. Now, this is important. And uh, I'm not going to take too much time. I wanted to cover this. This is so important. What is Dessalines going to do with this country, with this country, this landmass in a world dominated by mercantilist capitalism on the one hand and an emerging liberal capitalism on the other? Now, Dessalines does not care for the Laku system that the Africans wanted to establish. Remember, the Creole Blacks. Uh, 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 they're, they're just as bitter and they're, they're the enemies of the Africans. They're against this Laku system dominating all of Haiti. It didn't make sense in their mind. They viewed this as backwards, tribal, etc. So what is Desalines going to do? Now, Desalines writes in a constitution, the 1805 constitution. In the constitution, first thing, now this is they said the his, historiography of Haiti Dessalines was ignorant. He couldn't write. He, he was stupid. This is why they omitted Dessalines. Dessalines is very clever, very intelligent. There are, there are two things Dessalines puts in the 1805 Constitution that can tell us where Haiti, where what his vision for Haiti was. The first thing he does is he designates everyone as black on the island. Now, this, 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 it doesn't mean black in the racial sense that the whites were using it. He was trying to overcome the, the, the racial stigma uh, that the, the, the French and the mulattoes had imposed on African people on the island. Why do I say that? Because even the Polish who switched sides because there were a group of Polish mercenaries that arrived on the island with Leclerc. And this island was able to get them to switch sides and join them against the French uh, uh, during the Battle of Etier. And he gave them land on the southern part of, of, of Haiti post the revolution. He, he gave, he, he basically a form of a land reform for the Polish. And even the Polish were designated as black according to Dessalines. Anyone who steps foot on the island of Haiti, according to Dessalines, was Black. So this notion of racial categories, you know, by the time the Haitian Revolution commences in 1789, there's over 600 racial categories of groupings of people. Dessalines said, we'll do away with all that. Everyone on the island is Black. The Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> Sorry, you know. It's your friend from the UK. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. John. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry so for the interruption he, about the Polish. Please just emphasize that. I won't interrupt you again. I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's okay. So even the Polish he allowed on the islands were designated black. Everyone who steps foot on the island of Haiti was black. No no mulatto, no quadroon, none of that. All of these designations are thrown out. So he inverted the racial system, whereas America had the one drop rule. If you had one drop of black blood, you were considered black. Well, this Ali said it doesn't matter. 
The minute you step foot on the island of Haiti, you're black. The second thing that Dessalines did on the island that's very important, and this will tell us where he's going in his mindset, he says no white man could ever come on the island and own land. Now, this is very important because there was a, there was a practice un, in, during colonial uh, uh, Saint-Domingue where whites who arrived on the island would try to marry Black women who own land, and this is the, their way of acquiring wealth. And men, many of the Germans post uh, the revolution, many Germans did the same practice. They would try to marry Blacks or mulattoes to access land uh, um, to, to accumulate wealth during the mercantilist system. So this, those are two very important things that this Aline does. Now, why is it important? Because now this Ali has to decide what to do with all of this land. Now, remember, there's in his mind, there's two dominant systems. There's the mercantilist system and the liberal capitalist system. Mercantilist capitalism, liberal capitalism. The mulattoes under the leadership of, of Etion, they want to maintain the land they inherited from their, their former slave daddies. They want the land, they feel like they should. Their father, they inherited this land and they should maintain the land. The Creole Blacks also, Christophe, remember, Christophe would assassinate Papua, but we'll get to that a bit. So many of the Creole leadership also wanted to maintain that land that they had before 1804. Remember, uh, uh, when the planter class left during the revolution, many of the, the Creole generals simply uh, 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 took over their land and continued to court, uh, the, either the colonial system or through the corvée system. So, and the Africans, they want, now this is two thirds of the population, they want nothing to do with either the corvée system, which Dessalines uh, attempted to implement in his 1805 constitution, but the, the Africans want nothing to do with that system and they were willing to continue to go to war. So it is, now this is speculation. So now when Dessalines realizes that he's caught between these two systems and then the Africans who want nothing to do with either system he has to make a decision. What do I do? I'm dealing with the Creole and, and, and mulattoes on the one hand, and I have the, the two-thirds of the population with no land, nothing, and they want to, they want land as well. So this Aline, it is it is speculated that this Aline gives a speech in which he says, when in the face of the mulatto desire for land, uh, the Creole black desire for land. It is speculated that Desalines gives a speech in which he says, okay, what about those whose fathers are in Africa? What do they inherit? That speech, it is assumed that Desalines wanted land reform for the Africans. And basically that speech signs his death certificate because if land is redistributed among the Africans, that means land has to come from the Creole Blacks and the Mulattoes. So Pétion, in a plot between him, Christophe, you know, even though the history says Christophe does not participate in the assassination of Dessalines, but this, he, he realized that his interest is at play if Dessalines goes ahead with the land reform and redistributes the land amongst two thirds of the population. So he allows Pétion to go ahead with the plot to kill Miss Aline in 1804 and in 1806 at Pont Rouge. And Miss is assassinated. And what happens is the mercantilist liberal system would take over the Laku system, but not entirely, because with the assassination of Miss Aline. The majority of the population went into the mountains and into the forest, and, and they did. They established the Laku system throughout the provinces of Haiti, 
And the mulatto and the Creole Blacks basically control the capital city of uh, 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 um, Port-au-Prince and um, uh, uh, Cap Haitien, Lacai, those areas, because Haiti was divided into three regions, the West, the South, and the North. There were, after the assassination of Dessalines, uh, Christophe and Pétion would go to war and divide Haiti into the Northern Kingdom and the, the, the Southern Republic. Now, before we get to questions, I have six minutes to encapsulate to bring us to the contemporary model. So why, remember I said two important things that Dessalines did. He designated everyone as black and he said, no white man can own land on the island or come in as master. Now, this is very important because post-independence, post what happens in Haiti is Haiti contemporarily is stuck in the same social structural framework that dominated 1804 that dominated how in the decision-making process that this only has to undergo. The liberal, the mercantilist and the liberal model, the emphasis is on large land, a large ownership of land to produce export crops for the market and import manufacturing uh, products onto the island. Now that this requires uh, private land ownership, control of huge acres of land by private individuals at the expense of private or distri distributive land among the masses. So you have concentration of wealth, concentration of land. This is the same thing that's happening in 1804 that's happening today. So when the Americans would occupy Haiti from 1915 to 1934, the first thing that they did was get rid of the, the land clause. Why? Because you need land to produce export crops for the global market in a liberal mercantilist capitalist system. That's how the system operates. So in 1915, this redistribution of land, whereas the, the Africans, once the, after the assassination of Dessalines, they just moved to the provinces and in and, and the mountains and took over the land, took over uh, 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 coffee plantations in the mountains, took over plantations elsewhere. And what happened, the mulatto class controlled the export import trade, and the Creole blacks continued to produce export crop product, agri, agribusiness to export crop. So what would happen post-independence, the Creole Blacks in their plantations would produce export crops and the mulatto class would sell it on the market because of the, this is the racial component, too, because of their, their light, lighter skin, they were allowed to freely trade. But what happened is, and you can understand this, the Creole Blacks, they want to protect their trade their crops, so they want laws in place that will protect their crops so that they can make more money through the export of their crops. They don't want any competition from imported goods. Remember, if you've ever read Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, he uses the corn laws to explain uh, this process, this thinking. So it's the same process among the Creole class, but the merchant mulatto class, the problem is they want their, their problem is, no, 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 we want to freely trade and, and gain as much money as possible. So there's a conflict between the mulattoes who control uh, 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 the, the government post the, the assassination of Christophe and the unification of the island in 1821 of Guayer, and the Creole Blacks who want a, a form of protectionism for their crops. So you have an inversion of the liberal mercantilist model, protectionist model between the, 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 the Creole Blacks who want a protectionist system, the, the, the mulatto class who control the export-import trade, who want more of a liberal uh, 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 system. And then the poor Africans in the mountains who are in the Laku system who have no access to, to, to the power or the, the institutions that's governing this social economic 
system. So what happens is Haiti caught between these two systems. The implementation is since the occupation of uh, the, the U.S. occupation, Haiti has been recolonized through the liberal, we call it neoliberal, but it's no different from the liberal model that David Ricardo and uh, um, uh, Adam Smith introduced in 1776. The, the intent now is to force the Africans, since 1915, the emphasis has been to force the Africans off of the land into the city where they would work as cheap labor in manufacturing uh, uh, plants and other uh, 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 aspects, and then to grow, to use that abandoned land to grow crops to the export market. This is the neoliberal model that has, that America, who has replaced the, the French empire, has been trying to reinstitute in Haiti since 1915. They want, they call it neoliberalism. Now, Paul Collier, who wrote the plan for Haiti, based in the UK, based in Oxford, the intent is to remove the people in three things. Provide, Haiti will be an industrial base to replace the Taiwanese and Chinese cheap manufacturing labor force, A. Haiti will produce agribusiness, bananas and up for, for, for the export market and sports and entertainment, cultural entertainment and tourism. Those are the three industries that they want for Haiti under the new liberal, what they call neoliberal, under the liberal model. This is no different from what Dessalines is facing. Dessalines at post Vertier is having to deal with mercantilist capitalism, liberal capitalism on the other hand, and the Laku system of the Africans. That doesn't play a big role. It, it plays a big role post uh, the death of Bessali. Well, it's the same model today. You have a protectionist, you have a group of quote unquote Haitian leadership who are calling for a protectionist uh, uh, ma, uh, 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 system, mercantilism, for Haitian agribiz, Haitian products, et cetera, against this liberalization of the Haitian market. No different from what Dessalines it was facing. It, 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 it's just more of a, a, a debilitating system contemporarily. It's no different. Cheap labor source, the African people working in, in, in manufacturing plants, working in agribusiness for the global market, not for the interests of Haiti or the interests of the Haitian people, but the interests of a, a, of a global elite who control the export import trade and who control uh, uh, the, the, the industries in, in Haiti. And this is why we have to look to Vertier to understand how do we solve the issue? Dessalines, believe it or not, prior to Fidel Castro is trying to implement land nationalization because he realized as uh, uh, Russia is facing today, you have to be the, a population in a country must be able to feed itself and sustain itself. The reason why many of these sanctions have not been able to impact Russia the way it is because Russia is self-sufficient. Haiti imports, this is embarrassing. Haiti, since 1915, imports most of its food. A population that cannot feed itself will die, and Dessalines realizes this. And this is why we have to look at Dessalines' decision-making to see what we can garner from that in order to, to save Haiti. Because in all honesty, this neo-colonization of Haiti is no different from the colonial system. It's just now Haiti is operating as a neoliberal corvée state. Haiti, the state of Haiti is unable to raise enough taxes to, to, to provide anything for, for its population. That's the neoliberal model. You have to gut the state and allow businesses to liberally trade. But if you you cannot compete in such a system. 
And this Ali realized that with his decision making, he eventually he had no choice. But so we must. This is one of the things we must garner from the hate uh, from the Battle of Betchir. This Ali's decision making within three systems: mercantilism, liberalism, and what I call Lakuism, which Jean Casimir called the counter plantation system. And contemporarily, we're facing the same thing. You have a, we call it protectionism today versus neoliberalism on the other hand, and then a group of poor people in the mountains who all they want to do is provide for their families. This is, we have to look to this Ali, we have to look to, believe it or not, Russia to understand how a country uh, ought to become self-sufficient so that it can provide for itself. And I will end on that note. So I can take questions. Sorry if I went too long. Somebody is speaking, but they're muted. Sorry. Um, thank you, Dr. McComb. Um, um, moderator, um, may I ask a question? Uh, are you, it sounds like you may be on the telephone. Is that correct? No, I'm actually, I don't think so. I'm on Zoom. You Zoom, okay, because what we have now, we have asked uh, that the uh, questions be written in the chat. All right, sorry, sorry. I'm okay. so sorry. No, that's all right. My apologies. That's all right. That's okay, right. so I'll write. I thought he said he would take questions now. So that's why I thought I'd come to you. I'm so that, sorry. No, that is fine. That is quite all right. Okay. So we'll just oh, wait for your question. Yeah. I'll write it in the chat. Okay, thank right. you. Thank you. My apologies again. Please. Dr. Mokon, Paul, this is just wonderful, uh, extremely detailed, uh, comprehensive and rigorous analysis. Uh, definitely kind of blew my mind away uh, in terms of the complexity and also the connections that you've made. Uh, between uh, 1791, uh, 1803, 1804, and then the current situation uh, really puts it for me into uh, a new light. Um, okay, let me see here. Uh, we have a feedback. Um, excellent, thank you. This is from Sandra uh, Sutherland. Um, while we wait for the questions uh, to, to pop up, uh, to populate the chat, um, I'll try to kind of, um, not so much of a summary, um, I guess a slight recapitulation. Uh, what I'm hearing is that within Haiti right now, there is a struggle. And if we look at the past, uh, the uh, so-called Bosal, uh, the Africans, uh, that many people are referred to the Maroons that they went and then inhabit uh, the mountainside, okay. mm -hmm. and and they were the one responsible for producing the food that many of the Haitian people uh, consume. They yes. were against the mercantile system, where you basically produce specific product for export. Yes. Then you have a mulatto group, and and uh, perhaps also some of the free blacks, uh, Afonchi, who had properties, okay, engage uh, in a trade system. Uh, primarily the mulattoes because of the uh, 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 because of the um, blockade against color. Yes. They would trade with basically black Haitians. So the mulatto basically developed a niche system mm -hmm. where they monopolize trade. And for them, trade means bringing imports in so they can sell. And then you have black, uh, black Creoles who depended primarily on agricultural product that they sold to the intermediary of the mulatto group uh, outside, and they also buy kind of outside. So uh, from a financial point of view, the, uh, the black uh, uh, property owners and, and the mulatto class, they were pretty much allies. <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> they were somewhat allies. Yes, and yes. On top of that, they were also allied with the outsiders. Yes. Yes. So which left the majority of the two thirds of Haitians, the Bosal, 
who basically find a life for themselves within the countryside, pretty absolutely. much off. Yes, so absolutely. The people, and this is what we still have here. Absolutely. So the two tap, well, I wouldn't say tap, but the uh, the descendants of the uh, Creole Blacks and, and the Mulatto, they they are the ones currently still ruling Haiti. Yes, and if you look at it, what you have now in Haiti is an emerging uh, managerial professional class whose sole aim is to ascertain political power because that's the only means to make money in Haiti. You know, mm -hmm. Haiti's government is supported by the IMF and the World Bank. So you have a, a, a professional managerial class. Many of them have dual citizenship in Canada, the U.S., and their sole aim is to basically govern this system for the elites in Haiti, which is a, a Syrian mulatto elites, because the Syrians would, would come into Haiti post-World War II, and they would basically join the, the, the mulatto class and the Creole class. Mm -hmm. And they control the manufacturing, many of the industries in Haiti, the land. And the last remaining source of income for Haiti uh, uh, post the revolution was the port system. Even Aristide refused to privatize the port system. But in America, it put Matéli in office. The first thing he did was he privatized the port system. So the main source of income for the Haitian state has been decimated. So now, so now what you find in Haiti, you have the elites, a uh, Syrian mulatto, a uh, 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 black Creole black class, a m managerial professional class who ascertain most of their money from the IMF, the World Bank, uh, uh, international institutions such as uh, a National Endowment for Democracy, USAID, and then you have the masses of people on the island who are being pushed off of the land. Remember. They're, 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 they're passing laws to push the majority of people off of the land who, because they're growing crops to feed themselves, to sell, they can't compete with. Haiti doesn't even import. Haiti used to feed itself with rice. Now Haiti imports Taiwanese rice. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. This is insane. The questions are starting to populate now. Uh... Um, let's see, from Carl Tomlin, excellent presentation, Dr. Mokong. I would like to know about the complexities of marriages between the black women and men. Was it also the other way around, black men and white women? What were the implications? Excellent question. During the colonial era, the racial, the racial hierarchy was reified. It was, it, it, it was in stone and it would, historically developed like that. So what you would find, excuse me, white men would marry uh, 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 mulatto women, men, just like the Syrians would marry mulatto women. Now, if you were a Creole Black, the only opportunity of marrying a, 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 a Creole a, a mulatto woman is if you were one of two things, you were wealthy, land ownership, or you had um, you 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 were educated, and this is the same system that continues today. These classes in Haiti, people assume that Haiti doesn't have. It's not Haiti is different from the rest of the, uh, of the Caribbean, precisely because of that. Because the the racial class system emerged historically intact. Mulattoes really they married each other, or they would marry whites, or they would marry Syrians who who came to the island. And blacks tended to, there's even an anecdotal, uh, 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 I guess, uh, uh, it's anecdotal in the sense that in, in America, in, in, in the Haitian community, you're considered, considered a successful black man if you marry a mulattress looking woman. So it, it, the racial categories were set in stone in because they were set in stone in that way and they emerged historically in that way, um, the, the racial categories continue in place today. Majority of those in the provinces, in the mountains, uh, um, uh, tend to be darker skin. The ones in the cities, uh, in the capital city, tend to be mulatto. In the 19th century, 
there was a a, a a riot in Haiti in which one of the one of the rioters they said, well, if you're if you're a poor white, you're if you're a poor mulatto, you're you're black. But if you're if you're a a a a, a, a rich black, you're a mulatto. So race and class were intertwined and they emerged historically that way, which is different in, in, in America, which is different. Well, it's similar to America, I would say, but it's different from the rest of the Caribbean. The racial categories in America were set in stone. In fact, it's not until 1968 that they outlaw uh, interracial marriages in, in, uh, in America. Unlike Haiti, even though it was not written, it was not written in, in, the, in the Constitution, but it was tacitly understood that mulattoes married mulattoes, blacks married blacks, et cetera. So, and it, it's the same system till this day. In fact, that this was one of the issues the Mali, Mali administration had to deal with because one of the criticism of the Haitian masses was that Mali was putting a bunch of mulattoes in the political apparatus. You have people like Stephanie Valduin, who was minister of tourism. And on, on the face, she looked white. And so many of the Haitians were saying, oh, mulatto is a bunch of mulattoes and white people who are in control of the Haitian state. So till today, the racial categories, in spite of what this Aline attempted to do in the 1805 Constitution by designating everyone as Black, after his death, it, it, the, the, racial, the, 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 the racial categories would emerge uh, in place, okay, unfortunately. Sure. We have a question uh, from Sandra Sutherland. Other than the Polish, were there any other nationality on the island at the time? Yes. Uh, there was a You know, this Ali gets the, 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 the moniker is this Ali hated the French and he, he massacred and killed uh, the French. And that's not, they were Polish, they were French. And prior to the out, now this is up to some historical debate. Some historians argue that there were still, when the Africans started to arrive on the island, there were still some Tayano natives on the island. Some other historians argue, no, by the time the Africans started to arrive, many of the Tayano natives were killed. But some believe that they went into the mountains, which is interesting because at the ceremony of Wakaima, it is suggested that the Mala the the Tayano natives were also represented, um, and in Vodou, the Tayano natives are represented in, in in Haitian Vodou. For example, the black and red flag is associated with the Tayano natives, um, and is also associated with the flag of Isalim, who became a a, a, a a loi or a god in Haitian Vodou. So you had the Polish, you had the um, the French, there was many French who remained on the island, some Tayano, and then you also have later on Syrians post, this is late, way later on, Syrians and Jews who also came to the island. And then there were British. Remember, the Haitian Revolution, the planter class wanted to side with the British and try to get the British to take over Saint Domingue from France. So there were many Brits, many Spaniards who remained on the island as well. So yes. Yeah. Several groups. Uh, other question. This is from Hans uh, P. P. D. J. Uh, this was an excellent presentation. Uh, the speaker tied everything up well at the end with his uh, with his summary. Uh, Dr. Mokon, do you see similarities between the events of the past and today? For example, Haitians selling their lands and migrating overseas, or the assassination of the recent president? Oh, brilliant question! Brilliant question. It, 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 I'm going to deal with this very, that's a, that's, that's a brilliant question. Jovenel is assassinated. Now, there's a policy that would take place in Haiti post, um, post the death of Henri Christophe. We call it in Haitian political theory, politique de doublé. What that means is Christophe and um, Pétion following the death of Dessalines, they split the, they, they went to war over control over the island. Christophe representing the majority of the Creole Blacks, Pétion representing the mulatto class. Eventually it's a deadlock. They split the island between themselves. Uh, um, um, 
hey, the northern part became a kingdom and a republic. Boyer, who was a mulatto, reunites the island in 1821. And what he does is, and this starts un post Boyer, they realized that the Blacks constituted the majority on the island. So if they wanted their merc the mercantilist system to continue against any Black aspiration, they needed a Black face in political position. So what they would do is they would put a Black figurehead as president of the country, and then the, the Senate and the majority uh, behind the scene will be mulattoes and men, and they would implement many of the mercantilist and liberal ideas that the mulattoes wanted to do or wanted to implement, but they would do it through a black face and this would conceal the duplicity behind the system. Well, this continued. Remember, Hillary Clinton mightily lost the election. He wasn't even in the running. Hillary Clinton flew in to Haiti and made and, and basically pushed Matali onto the people. Matali is described as a mulatto, if you want to call it, whatever. And post the Matali administration, because of the uproar about so many mulattoes in leadership positions and the institutions, they appointed Jovenel, who was a quote unquote a banana plantation farmer. And they designated him to be the president of Haiti post the Matali administration. Now, his sole aim, remember, the, 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 let's be honest here, the presidency of Haiti is just a figurehead. Everything, the policies that are to be implemented are basically directed by the U.S. State Department and uh, 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 the IMF and the World Bank. Let's, let's not... Let's not fool ourselves here. So what happens is Jovenel gets into power and he, he, he runs on the slogan that he's going to provide electricity throughout the island for the masses. But under neoliberal provisions, Matali privatized everything. He privatized the electric company in Haiti, which fell under the arms of Reginald Boulos and Falb. They privatized the ports. The largest port is owned, Port Lafayette in Haiti, which is owned by Pichio. They privatized basically everything in Haiti. And the sole means of income for the Haitian state was taxation. But you can't tax the people if they have nothing. When Jovenel attempted to electrify the island, he, and he realized that the state coffers are empty, he appeals to the elites and say, hey, we have to re renegotiate this deal. Uh, I may have to retake over the, the, the electric company, et cetera, whatever. And they say no. So what he does is he goes around the, the entire island, basically lambasting the Haitian elites, how they're preventing him from doing anything. And what caused the things about his assassination he says he's going to appeal to Russia to help establish the Haitian Electric Company, and that was his deathbed, death nail. He basically was trying, I guess his conscience got the best of him, and he realized that he was unable to provide uh, uh, you, you know, his political agenda, and he went against the Haitian elite, and his appeal to China and Russia, that was the end. Remember, America has imposed Taiwan, which is not an independent country. It is a province of China. Haiti is only allowed to trade with Taiwan, not China. And Jovenel's dilemma is he, he wanted to trade. He realized he was stuck and he appealed to China and Russia. And that was the end. Um, uh, the current prime minister is implicated in his assassination. Um, America backs him to continue the neoliberalization of the Haitian state, which is why they have not called upon him to call elections. Um, so, yes, you can view this Ali's attempt to nationalize the land, Jovenel's attempt to appeal to Russia to basically circumvent the neoliberal 
uh, 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 model as a, a similar uh, 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 operation that caused both their deaths, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, another question from uh, Sandra Sutherland. Please speak to what role the church played in all this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, don't, don't get me started. Uh, people fail to realize that the, the, the decision to remember during the 17th and 16th century, the, the church is at the head. The, the church holds power among the colonial empires at the time. Uh, even the British, even though the British, the, the Protestant Reformation, the British would become Anglican, but the church still held power in deciding conflict, in deciding anything uh, among the colonial elites. Uh, America would, would go against that once it was established as a country. But um, remember, it was the, the, the it was it was a a, a Catholic priest. Bartholomew de la Casas, who suggested that the, the colonial empires start to import African enslaved Africans to work on the plantations at the expense of the native people because the native people were dying off uh, from European diseases. Um, and basically, it's the Catholic Church in Haiti even to some extent, contemporarily, that controls the daily lives of the people. Um, the voodoo sector now against some of the images of the Catholic Church, et cetera, they're starting to reconstitute themselves as a separate community. For a long time, it was the Catholic Church uh, supported the colonial system. The Catholic Church supported the enslavement of African people. They, they, they claim to be uh, uh, more moral because they, they, they allow, they, they basically dictated how slave, uh, enslaved Africans ought to be treated in the plantation. So the Catholic Church played a significant role in maintaining the status quo. Even contemporarily, the Catholic Church plays a significant role in continuing the exploitation of Haitian people. It, 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 it's a no-brainer, okay. which, which, is, which is paradoxical because Aristide was a Catholic, was a Catholic priest, but he had to go against the Catholic Church to start his own liberation theology. The Catholic, even people fail to realize the Catholic Church removed Aristide once he started to appeal to the Haitian masses and promote liberation theology, which the Catholic Church has been against and all, all over Latin America. So in a, in a sense, the Catholic Church has been significant in maintaining the oppression of the, the, the Haitian people. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Dr. G, the church is not only a Catholicism, but the other religions that have managed to zombify the people of Haiti. I guess this is a comment. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially post independence when the Protestant churches started to come into Haiti. Now you 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 have Protestant churches all over Haiti preaching a prosperity gospel, exploiting the people, building mega churches and exploiting poor people for money. It, the Protestant churches, yeah, absolutely. They're 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 decimating our historical monuments, uh, uh, attributing it. They decimated Wakaima. They burnt the tree, saying that the voodoo, Sodo. They they've done tremendous damage to the history, the culture, the geography of Haiti. Absolutely. Okay. Now, oh, no other question. But I do have um, a question. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has to do with: um, Are you aware of any uh, scholarly work done? on the differences between the mulatto property owners and then the average mulatto, yes. two of whom were slaves. According to Dantes Delgado, 40, mm -hmm. there were 40,000 mulatto slaves. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Dr. Uh, Selly and Joseph does work on that, um, yeah. Carol Fick, who wrote The Making of Haiti, uh, uh, she does work on that Canadian scholar. 
Um, Loan Dubois as well as work on that. Yes, there were there were a lot of slaves. I draw, you know, in in social sciences, um, Max Weber introduced this concept called ideal type. Ideal type. The reason why I, I stick to the categorization, I do it for my students so that they can get an understanding. Um, now it's fluid. Everything is fluid. You just like you had uh, uh, wealthy, free. Creole Blacks who had slaves. Dessalim had slaves. Toussaint had slaves. Mm-hmm. Um, they were just as brutal as uh, um, some of the slave, some of the white plantation owners. They were Creole Blacks. Uh, I'm sorry, they were mulattoes who were uh, um, who right. were um, slaves as well. Uh, many of them started off as slaves. Their their class position, the mulatto class position, was contingent upon the wealth and the goodwill of their fathers, of course, because they inherited the land of the fathers. So if they had a a brutal father, for example, Thomas Jefferson in in, in North America, he kept his children enslaved. So it all depended on the wealth of uh, of their fathers as well as the goodwill. Many of them didn't inherit land, but they were allowed, their fathers sent them to France to study and be educated. So, which is why people like Pétion, Rigaud, Boyer, initially, uh, when they realized the Creole Blacks had taken over the island, many of them went to France to to study and live. So yes, there were a few mulattoes who were poor. So could we say that in terms of understanding Haiti, it's follow the money, not necessarily (laughs) the skin color. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Follow the money, guys. Follow okay. the money. Follow, follow the money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, 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 it is interesting because when, because of them, there's a great book. It's, it, it's actually a, an autobiography. It's called This Topic, in which he captured the, the racial development of, uh, of, of Haiti and the mass migration of Haitians because the massive migration of Haiti to places like America and Canada, the mulatto class was forced to face their own racial stigma and their own racial stereotype. Because when they came to America, they were black, they were niggers in America. So they, because of that, Haiti now, because of the diaspora, the Haitian diaspora, returning to Haiti, they're having to deal with the, the, with the racial issue but now the class issue is still a significant issue in Haiti. Yep, correct. Uh, comment by Ms. Sutherland, beautiful talk, thank you. Uh, we don't have any more message and we are a little bit uh, beyond 3.30. Uh, shall I thank the good doctor or could we have one more question? Nobody has any more questions. <laughs> well, I don't want to presume on your time. Paul, no, no, this, you good, you're good, brother. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for your generosity. You have been wonderful. The talk, I think, has been exceptional. Uh, the questions illuminating. Uh, we would love, on behalf of the Louverture Cultural Society, I hope I'm speaking for you guys, we would love to have you back again. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. you. I still want to deal with this issue why you call your, 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 your organization after two cents. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's well, another topic. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have you back so we can talk because there's a lot of two cents. <laughs> well, you know, we human beings, you know, we I got, I got you, brother. I got one time and so on. But we'll talk about that. Because, he, was, uh, he was a brilliant man, though. He was yeah, a brilliant, man. Yeah. brilliant. 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 Yeah. 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 He, anyway, we'll, okay. We'll have you back for two seconds. How's that? No problem. Thank you for having me. You're very well. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. And I look forward to seeing you all in our next webinar or our next live event. Thank you. And have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Uh, Board members, please stay on for the debriefing. All guests, thank you for coming and have a wonderful weekend.